Good day and welcome back to another DBZ Dokken Battle video. In this video we are going to be taking a look at the Strength Pan and her EZA on DBZ Dokken Battle. So this is Life of the Party Pan GT and with her Extreme EZA maybe not as uh, prolific as some of the other ones just some slight amendments basically to her uh, so she has attack and defense of 120% permanently now, not just for 7 turns. She retains her chance of evasion going up 15% per each turn, up to a max of 60. But now she has key plus 3 plus an additional attack and defense of 120% for 7 turns from the start of battle. So essentially she has a much higher defensive cap than she had before. Has a very very good starting defense. She now also raises her attack and defense by 30% for 6 turns on her super attack. So overall, along with the EZA stats, a nice little change for her. Uh, quite a strong unit now, or at least a unit that can be a lot stronger than she was before. In terms of links, a decent link set, all in the family, the Saiyan Lineage, Battlefield Diva, GT, the Innocence, Kamehameha, and Shattering the Limit. Definitely, like most of the other Pepe Girls units, a split in her link set, with all in the family, Saiyan Lineage, Kamehameha, and the Innocence being more common amongst hybrid Saiyan teams, and Battlefield Diva, GT, and Sharing the Limit being more common along the, well, GT is obviously a GT link, but Battlefield Diva, Sharing the Limit, both being a bit more common along the Pepe Gals line. In terms of categories, she's not on Pepe Gals, so that makes her Battlefield Diva almost useless, not quite, but it makes it pretty rough. Uh, it is usable on Youth and Dragon Ball Seekers, uh, alongside other units like Bulma Youth, uh, but for the most part definitely not as useful as other Pepe Gals units who have quite a market on the Battlefield Diva link. She's on Hybrid Sands, Goku's Family Youth, Kamehameha, Space Traveling Warriors, GT Heroes and Bond of Friendship. With Space Traveling Warriors, Dragon Ball Seekers and GT Heroes probably being the premier, well, the premier teams for you to run her on. That's where you're going to see the most user usability out of her. That's going to be where you see the best performance of our little pan. So overall, uh, we'll try her on the Goku's family team first. Uh, you can see her here in the very first turn. Not too much of a setup going on here. Uh, she's got 118 or so thousand defense, which is very, very good. Uh, obviously, Rainbow Pan, great stats. Uh, but this is a pretty solid starting point for Pan. It's not a bad point at all. Uh, she looks really reliable and, you know, she is pretty solid. Um, she can obviously stack that defense further, uh, but you're going to need her to stay on main rotation for those stacks to really start racking up. But the nice thing is that 6 turns does allow her to keep her increased defense while she is floating. So she can still be a very reasonable floating unit uh, that can do a pretty solid amount of work. So. Yeah, overall, obviously, got some nice usability there. In terms of damage, she doesn't really start out with the highest damage. Uh, she can obviously increase that by racking up her stacks. But for the most part with Pan, um, she seems to be like more a filler unit defensively. Uh, she doesn't carry a lot of the utility the other Pepe Girls units have. You know, units like Videl with her intense amount of healing, Bulma with her healing, AGL Mai with her stunning mechanism. So she, in this heroine EZA, probably has the most, I would say, bland passive uh, in terms of outward performance. She doesn't really provide much to your team beyond the very solid amount of defense that she has. And, of course, the ability to raise that defense uh, even further. But... Yeah, she's not really got the most, I would say, intriguing kit of abilities. She does uh, somewhat struggle, um, you know, with providing some basis there. Although, she looks pretty solid here. Uh, she's linked up with the Xenopan, so we've got four links there, which is a nice linking partner for her. She's got some support from the Goku, and she's rocking 154,000 defense, which is a fantastic starting point. Uh, so, that's a really good defense, by the way. Um, she will stack that by 30% once she fires off her super attack. 
In terms of build, it's difficult to say, but I, I definitely think that crit is the way to go with Pan. Uh, she's not got the highest attack stats, so maximizing those will be mainly based on the crit. And her defense is high enough after just a single super for her to be okay defensively um, for most difficult content, especially at a rainbow level. You can do a split build between the two of them, but if you want to get any kind of damage out of Pan, which realistically is all she can do besides having reasonable defense, then I would highly suggest that you go for crit. Um, she's not really got any innate like crit chance or stunning or anything that might take advantage of the additionals. So you're mainly going to want to go crit to maximize her ability to damage the higher end events where they have quite a large amount of damage reduction. Uh, that being said, that's a pretty simple build for Pan which favors her because she's strength and she starts with 5 base crit so overall pretty nice for Pan. Uh, we'll be jumping across to a another event. In this event we will be using a GT Heroes team uh, where you should see the absolute best of Pan uh, at least well not the absolute best. The absolute best from Pan would be her double supering for three rotations and on that final super with a buff with the, a crit. So there you'd see some really big damage from Pan. But it's a very unlikely scenario requiring her to double super and then get a crit on the final super in her third rotation. Which would be the sixth turn. So that is not an entirely likely scenario. But it is still viable. Pan can definitely sit in the main slot especially for the first seven turns with her additional 120% defense. But because she's not giving you much offensive output, I don't know if it's entirely worth leaving her in that main slot. She does obviously have some evasion, which coupled with her pretty impressive defense makes her quite a strong starting unit. Maybe you want to pair her with a unit that needs to stack. Maybe you don't want to have them in the first slot. Pan can fill that pro like priority slot for you. Alternatively, just keep her in the floating scenario where she's a unit that's unlikely to take an incredibly large amount of damage. She will have evasion in that third slot. She will have increased defense from supering. So for the most part, she shouldn't take a tremendous amount of damage in that third slot. And I think that's going to be the place where you find her the most useful. Here we can see she's got a pretty solid amount of support there. And you can see she is rocking a huge amount of defense. She does have the GT hero support from the Gohan and the you know, Goten unit. But this is definitely a much better example of Pan in her priority position. We can see her get that evasion again. But the attack stat still remains quite low. I think what they could have done for Pan. Considering the lack of utility that she does bring. Uh, they could have either made her a GT support as well, uh, which may have you know, just really beefed up the category and made more incentive for you to bring her as a floater. Or what they could have done is realistically made her also increase her uh, attack with every evasion. Um, so maybe increasing her attack by 15% as well with every evasion. Uh, that would just keep her attack relevant while her defense progressively drops and her attack and evasion progressively go up. So her raw defense overall would eventually drop, but her attack and her evasion mechanism would continue to increase. So it would kind of be like a rotationary shift within the unit, which I think would be a little bit more interesting than the current scenario where essentially we just kind of have Pan slowly gaining evasion and then eventually having a slight drop in defense. Uh, with if you leave her on main rotation with a minor increase in her attacking output. But overall she is still usable in the current meta. She can definitely be a viable floater. Like I said she does have definite usability on AGT Heroes team, on a Hybrid Sands team. I wouldn't really use her on anything else. Uh, but she does link up really well with this B-Pan. Uh, they share 6 links which is super impressive. Uh, and it makes them a nice combo, 244,000 defense, very good, uh, great for the Gods of Destruction events if you're looking for a unit that can just kind of tank up. We're going to activate B-Pan's skill, it's not really something you should do for a unit like Pan, uh, it's her attack stats aren't really something that's going to be maximized by the utilization uh, of, well it will be maximized but it won't be uh, made tremendous like other units would. 
and Pan does have quite a bit of you know, defense on this, well, defensive support and attacking support. So this is probably the best scenario we're going to be able to see for Pan. Uh, we should be able to see pretty solid results overall for her. Uh, we'll see her highest attack stat for sure. Six links uh, with the support from the Pan, with the support from the Goten and the Gohan. Uh, Two million which is pretty good. Um, obviously, we do have that increased uh, support from the pan, but for the most part, that's still a pretty solid attack stat. Um, you know, two million is really quite good. Uh, she could have stacked that for another turn, and we could have possibly activated the uh, B pan buff on her next turn out, and she would have hit for even harder. So there is definitely all those possibilities within the unit itself. Uh, there is still scope for her to grow, but she's definitely a unit that's not going to hit the peaks as quickly as, say, a Bulma. Bulma, for me, is essentially just the same thing as Pan, um, but with less evasion. Like, if they'd run the exact same thing for Bulma, even just the attack portion, where Pan gains attack uh, with her evasions, like I said earlier, that probably would have made Pan incredibly viable. Uh, so, yeah. But, I mean, it's not a major train smash. Uh, Pan is still really, really good and much better than she was before. And definitely can be utilized by anyone who's got a rainbowed if you need a Goku's Family unit, a Dragon Ball Seekers unit, a Space Traveling Warriors unit. Actually, very good option. Uh, especially for challenges like the, you know, legendary Goku GT event and those type of uh, challenges. So yeah, Pan overall, pretty good. Not maybe as good as the other ones, at least not on face value, uh, but still with a good amount of usability. So if we take a look at the links, there are quite a few links and some you could focus on is All in the Family and the Saiyan Lineage. Both of those are a pretty good combination along with Kamehameha and you could easily activate them on teams like Goku's Family, Kamehameha, uh, Hybrid Saiyans, all of those are pretty solid enough to activate and will give Pan a pretty resounding 25% uh, defensive increase uh, along with also giving her a 10% on super attack increase and a 5% attack increase. Linking with the B Pan gives you all in the family and the Saiyan lineage. The only thing linking with B Pan does not give you is Kamehameha. So it's nice that for this Pan the best option for her is a free-to-play unit in the form of the B-Pan, the LRB pan Very, very solid unit. So a nice like fact that she can have this easily accessible good unit to utilize. I think that's always kind of a positive when you look at a unit. The fact that they have such a good free-to-play LR option. Uh, for me, just makes things a lot easier uh, and a lot better overall. But yeah, uh, beyond that, linking partners, Battlefield Diva is not entirely common, especially with someone who can't be placed on the Pepe Gals team. So realistically, you're looking at things like the Innocence and Battlefield Diva for a youth category team, possibly. If you link her up with Burma Youth, they can share those two links, which is not bad at all, uh, but definitely not maybe the best case scenario for things to be in so there is that to factor in but yeah for the most part i definitely think um that there are some really solid options if we look at the goku's family here you can see there are a couple units that do share saiyan lineage all in the family kamehameha uh, so they are some good linking partners for her especially the free to play again another free to play lr in the form of the goku and the gohan unit so i just think you have enough options here to make things work i'm not saying that it's going to make her a stellar unit but you definitely have some powerful options to link up with her and just maybe produce some really solid results. Similarly with the Xenopan, uh, she's also very solid overall uh, and is definitely someone that you can link things up with and get things done with. But that's going to be it from me guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did or leave a comment if you have any questions. And let me know if you're using Pan and how you're finding her easier. 
But that's going to be it from me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe and I'll see you next time. Until then, take care and bye.